And finally, then I stretch it in two sides. Argument up for that. I also uh, attempt to define fascism. What is fascism? From that, I could then analyze and categorize Jutu Vargas if he would fit in that position of being a fascist or not. So then I had two sides of my, my, my investigation was based on arguments for pro-fascist inclinations and arguments against these fascist inclinations. So the arguments for pro-fascist are based on uh, his Brazilian, Brazilian proximity uh, with Nazi Germany, economic proximity, uh, this economic proximity lasted until 1942, even after the war had started and the U.S. was uh, pressuring Brazil to end these relations with Brazil. The second one was the deportation of Olga Benadi. Olga Benadi was a Jewish communist who fled from Europe into Brazil. And the police here in Brazil found her out uh, to be a spy and then later deported her back to Germany. Uh, Jutra Vargas was aware of this and she later on died in 1942 in a gas chamber in uh, one of the concentration camps. Finally, the new state. Uh, the new state was when it uh, is marked in 1937 to 1945. Uh, the new state is Getúlio uh, Vargas' uh, dictatorship. He, could, he abolished the constitution, created a new one in 1937. He repressed the freedom of press and, and media. He uh, focused legislative powers on him. So this uh, constituted him in being a dictator for the, that period of time, 37 and 45. Then arguments against his, uh, oh, and before that, a speech at Minas Gerais, was a Minas Gerais was a battleship, and where, where his, his speech, he was talking, he was saying, uh, he was condemning liberalism and, uh, as he states, fallen democracies or weak democracies. And this can be an alliance with the fascist tendency. Um, finally, again, uh, arguments against his fascist, uh, his fa fascist inclinations are the Washington Accords, which were a series of uh, negotiations with the United States, uh, negotiating investments in Brazil, Brazil's in the industry, industry sector. Brazil siding with allies during the war in 1942. Uh, Brazil officially ended the war with uh, the allies, and was the only Latin country, uh, la uh, only country from South America to actually deploy troops. Uh, to here. And finally, his own personal di diary, which contradicts some of the evidence presented in the speech of Jimena Gerais, where he actually justifies the controversy that has uh, led uh, from uh, his speech. Finally, my conclusions. In that my, I came into the paper believing that he was a fascist. I wanted to prove that he was a fascist. And, and I began defending his position. Uh, I soon found out that evidence proved up the otherwise. I was very leaning uh, the evidence, although I wanted to almost um, prove that it was a fascist, evidence almost that he proved that it wasn't quite as I saw before. And so therefore I had a change of perspective. Uh, he is, through my evidence, I found that he was an authoritarian, authoritarian dictator and a pragmatic politician. However, he is not much of a fascist. He doesn't constitute the, the, the categories for being a fascist. It, he didn't have um, he, in the left right spectrum, he didn't really classify the left or right. He did actions on the right spectrum and the left spectrum. Usually, the fascist uh, dictators are solely on the right spectrum and very against communism. So, there's not much leftist uh, actions, which he threw about as it is. Finally, my challenges through this essay. I had a difficulty setting the research question. I uh, started uh, with a research question and then later on changed. On the second research question, uh, I began too broad. I wasn't specific enough. And so I had this whole essay, uh, which was a theoretical situation that might have happened in Bristol side of the axis, the axis. And then I moved later on found that I couldn't possibly cover this uh, situation in 1,000 words. And also I, had, I didn't have the reliability of, source, uh, of sources. And, and then this actually is going to be my third research question. I had uh, difficulty in defining fascism. Why? Because fascism, fascism doesn't have a universal uh, definition. There isn't a consensus. Uh, this is fascism. Various researchers, professors see it in a different manners. Some people have different uh, categories or characteristics of fascism. So basically, I had to research and um, uh, come up with uh, a characteristic of my own. However, even then, I am unsure. Uh, as of the moment, so I haven't talked with different professors. I question the reliability of this um, of this source. 
Uh, therefore, it's, it's very difficult. And basically, my whole essay is based on this definition of fascism. Because if I can't define fascism, I can't analyze it through violence as a fascist. So this is, was, for me, but my great challenge. Also, I didn't ask for help for any of When I, I was having difficulty, I didn't approach teachers. I should have approached, um, as you see, my, my, friend, my uh, advisor for my study, Mr. Bear, uh, Mr. Hope, and other people who had uh, history of expertise, and, which I didn't. And this uh, caused me to delay my, my, my process of uh, my study. Essay. And finally, I believe all will hear this today during the Mosei presentation with his time management. <laughs> I cannot stress this enough. I am not an organized person. I'm a procrastinator. I, I know that. And for those procrastinators out there, you'll see what's happening. It, it's tough. Um, actually, my other slide, uh, when I transferred, I had another slide, so I'll just uh, say it out loud. So this is um, mostly my advice and my what I learned. Right. So juniors uh, who are going to undertake the extended essay, I'm not even kidding. By this week, think of advising. Think of a, uh, a, a, a topic and start talking already. Because th then you can start planning. I, uh, I was set a date. I was, uh, people, we were set a date to finish, which we didn't complete. So I'm going to tell you, juniors, finish the extended essay by this Christmas. This Christmas. I'm not even kidding. Try to do it by this Christmas because then you can, uh, in March uh, or February, when you're actually, when it's your deadline, you're not going to have time to finish that extended essay. And then it's going to be a whole mess, IAs, anyways. Finish by this Christmas. Leave me. So, um, <laughs> what have I learned from this new So, uh, I learned that, uh, I learned his life, I learned his actions, something that I didn't know. Brazil during World War II period, and I, it was a lot of fun reading about him. I, I, I'm not even kidding. Like, I, I enjoyed learning about this. And once you find your topic that you want, you'll have fun reading, you'll have fun researching. But you have to find a, a topic you actually like. Uh, I also learned the correct use of citations. Uh, as people say, they should, we'll know that we need a lot of citations, especially for history. Uh, evidences, researchers, you're always going to have these citing. And you have to be cited correctly and citing um, reliable sources. Which also brings to my next one. It's judging the reliability of um, of sources. If you get something for an you have to see how reliable is this. If a person reads my internet essay and sees this page on Wikipedia, will the person see like, is this uh, reliable enough? Is this person knows what he's talking about? And this, the reliability of the sources will later impact on the reliability of your paper. It's a cause and effect relationship. And finally, the necessity of time management. Once again, if you can write a hundred words per week, it's good. Because if you divide your extended essay by little amounts in, in big amounts of time, you're going to end your extended essay with, uh, when you see you have already uh, done your extended essay, it's going to be finished. And you're not, it's not so, um, it's, not, it's not detrimental to yourself. It's not physically and mentally uh, degrading for you. And finally, uh, not be afraid to ask help. The teachers and the faculty are here to, are here to help, and they will uh, welcome you to drop in arms. Something I shouldn't have done. And if anything you need help searching anything, ask teachers. They will most likely be, will do more than uh, they should. And not more than they should. They will do more uh, than you expect to help. So do trust them. Finally, uh, I'll open this time uh, for my panelists and questions from the audience. So thank you very much for your presentation. you said that Getulio Vargas 
Um, what's so important to Brazil is that it had implications until present day. So you could emphasize this fact when talking about the foundation of these companies, because many of the companies, they actually have an important role in Brazil's industry until present day. So just emphasize the, the importance of the two blocks. And also, you say, when mentioning the First World War, you say that the beginning of the 20th century was marked by the largest scale war the world had ever seen. But you didn't mention the name of the war. So, just forgot to do it, yeah, but it can be understood. Um, and you kept saying that, even here in the presentation, that in order to analyze a piece of history, the historical context must be understood. But you could explain more the importance and the implications of understanding the historical context of that thing. Here you said that the historical context is important to understand because um, it vary, um, because beliefs vary according to time. So beliefs at that time were different from today. So you could emphasize on that essay. And also, you, a suggestion for you to develop the essay is to make more reference, uh, reference to the research of the 14 characteristics of fascism that you base your research on. Um, because well, I think it is a very, very solid uh, source of knowledge that you're basing on. Um, but you forgot to cite, when you mentioned the 14 characteristics on the essay, I think you forgot to cite the study. Mm. In regards now to language, sometimes uh, you lack cohesion on the phrases, but this is, it can be sim uh, very simply corrected. Yeah. So, for instance, when we're talking about totalitarian governments, the rise of totalitarian governments, you stop the phrase, and then start. Such as countries as Hitler's Nazi Germany, Mussolini's fascist Italy, and so on. So it's lacking the cohesion between the two phrases. And also you mentioned ta um, the word state many times on the essay, but you don't write it capitalized. Because you're, you're meaning the feder uh, federation, it's better to capitalize the word so it doesn't have a double meaning. Um, yeah. Oh, and also you should add limitations and unnecessary questions to the conclusion. Okay. I have a question. Uh, it's really fun for me to read. Um, as uh, someone who's only been in Brazil for, for two months and I'm trying to gobble up as much you know, Brazilian culture and history as possible, so I was really excited to read your, uh, your essay and I, and I really enjoyed it. And it caused me to then look up a whole lot more you know, on Vargas because you know, I, I found your essay fascinating um, and you start by talking about like Brazil today, um, and one thing that I also thought of is that in the short time that I've been here, several people have referenced Vargas uh, and his lasting impact on Brazil now. And so you do get into him as a fascist, but I guess one thing I was wondering, and this is I guess a question and a suggestion, like why does it matter whether or not he's a fascist? Um, and and I don't know why. Why does what Getúlio Vargas did from 1930 to 1945? matter to any of us in 2016. I think there's a lot of answers yeah. there. I don't do you, do you have any thoughts on oh, like I think you could I have some considerations on that. Um, what is it, the present sense of fascist is use a very pejorative sense. Mm -hmm. like he's a fascist it, it's almost like a democrat. But uh, then because in that time being a fascist meant you were aligning with uh, with uh, uh, Mussolini's Italy or in a certain sense Nazi uh, Nazi Germany. But Brazil actually sided with the Allies. So I was wondering, would he actually side with the Axis? Like, where where was he on in that sense? Was he did he uh, was he pressured into siding with, with the Allies, or did he willingly do this? And his actions in World War in, he did like it made Brazil the economy it is today. Because when I said the Washington Accords, he negotiated uh, in, investments in Brazil, right? And through these investments, he founded a siderurgy company, uh, a mineration uh, company, which is Vale do Rio With this, also, he later on went to establish Petrobras, which is uh, our, our biggest company that uh, was a, a great part of our GDP. Uh, so, he, he also, uh, before uh, 1937, he, he established the CLT, which is cons consolidations of. Uh, as consolidações das leis de trabalho, 
which are the, the workers' uh, laws that protect workers, that he established the minimum wage. So he was the first one, and so he really, um, he started Brazil's industrialization. He, he was the one, he was the mark, and it's because of him that we have such a powerful economy. So his actually before affected the, the, what Brazil is today. Yeah, and so I, 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 I really like what you're saying there. You, you finish up by saying he was no doubt a dictator. Uh, you know, so then, uh, you know, so I guess I wonder if then, you know, with the essay, if it took a turn towards like, you know, if you think your, your thesis was somewhere along the lines of sometimes you need a dictator to beat your country. Yeah. Out, you know, because, you know, like many people could argue, you know, that would be a really you know, interesting path to go down. Because um, I found myself saying, well, I don't really care if he's a fascist or not, but I'm just really interested in like, things that he did and how they had an impact, and even if he was a bad guy, perhaps, or authoritarian, like, was this what was necessary at the time? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, a couple of things I'd like to say, positive, very poised, you present yourself very well, you're sharp. You, your enthusiasm with which I took the research is, is evident which is, I think, uh, key and very important. I think uh, that also another compliment is that you went into the research with one idea in your mind, and through the work that you did, you came up with another idea. And that's the whole purpose of this, right? You're not trying to defend a position. You're trying to investigate something to answer a question. And you don't know what that answer is when you when you go into it. Uh, the, the question that I have, you, you base this, and this ties in here, why is this important? But you base this on a reputation. Right. Why was the reputation, or, or to what extent, yeah. the reputation? Where did that reputation come from? Is it just something you hear on the streets? He was a fascist, as you said, in the majority sense? Yeah. Or are there scholars who've done, spent parts of their lives researching, and, and they say he was a fascist? Because the, the one leads to a bit more rich research, I, I think, than, than the other. Well, the, the, yeah, so while researching, I tried to see if there were any like expert position on whether he was a fascist or not. But what I found is there is not much done in terms of his fascist alignments. What I see is people say, ah, he wasn't. But they don't really say why. So, which one of, was one of the reasons why I took this research. Uh, to see if he was or not. And in this sense, um, you just repeat what you just, uh, I just, just blanked out. Um, so did I, I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just ask you, 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 you base this on a reputation yeah, okay. he has, but where did that idea oh, of reputation okay. sorry. come from? I just, sorry, <laughs> I lost myself in my own train of thought. Um, because people say that Getulio uh, Vargas was uh, leaning to uh, support the Axis rather than the Allies. And just that is something that's more research than whether he had fascist tendencies, right? So uh, being that he was leaning towards, uh, but even that, when I researched, it doesn't seem he was leaning toward uh, sustain, um, uh, supporting the Axis. It was more like he's neutral, he's getting best of both sides, and people kind of see that. Uh, and that's just common sense in Brazil, people who haven't had much uh, background in history. Uh, it's more through, through, through talking to streets. People say, ah, the Vargas was a fascist, but not much basis in history. When you actually look into, it's not much. He's just, he's getting, trying to commercialize with uh, Germany, but at the same time, trying to get investments from the United States, right? So he has this mutual. But at that time, you were commercializing with, United, with the Nazi Germany. In 1942, was a dangerous thing. Especially if, uh, in, the, in the Western Hemisphere, having uh, such a big uh, country, such as the United States, right by it. So now, that is what I believe makes people think, ah, he was a fascist. But in reality, when you see the research, it's not much of that. Not much of that uh, happens. And what you said there may be an interesting thing to take a look at. If you think about from 45 until today, that history really hinged on the decision that he made. If he was wavering and just the pragmatist looking for the, which side to choose, that, that affects everything from 1945 on. The last thing I'll say is that there's a lot here, and, and as Mr. Jones said, you know, there's so much in such an interesting topic. A suggestion would be, because 4,000 words seems like a lot, but it's not. 
a lot to do everything that you need to do. Maybe a 37 to 45 time frame because in your essay you break it down into three distinct time frames. But only one of those you see a dictator, right, in the true sense of the word. Maybe you do a deeper analysis just on those eight years, just a suggestion if it can lead to a richness that, that is really hard to get at 4,000 words over the course of 15 years. Um, I just want, I wanted to like give some good critics now because it just makes some suggestions. <laughs> like the topic, it is actually really interesting. I, when I was reading the essay, I uh, began to interest myself more to knowing um, where the research was going. So I wanted to also reach a conclusion um, whether it was a facet uh, or not um, when I was reading your paper. and. Um, the main source that you're basing your research on about the 14 characteristics of fascism, it seems very solid. Um, and I think you chose very wisely this, this study. So, yeah, a good way, well, a good way to go. But my, my main question is, what would you do different if you could come back in the past? In terms of the failure. Yeah, and if I, I redid it, yeah. what do I do different if I undertake it? In, 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 in terms of doing the essay or in content of the essay? Doing the essay. Uh, <laughs> well, the first, um, well, do a timetable, you know? See, like, find a, the dates of when I want to finish the essay and when I start. And then I would separate the amount of words I would write per week. And then I would say, yeah, this week I have to write at least 200 words. Then I write. And this would accumulate until a certain extent, into a, a date where I could later you know, revise multiple times, get it by multiple teams, just then um, just processing the essay. I think, in terms of time management, if I could have finished, if I could have done the work I did a lot earlier, it would be much more beneficial to me. So that's the number one thing I would do. But thank you. Anything else for the panelists? Great. I'll open to questions for the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have something to say? No. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, I'll open to questions for the audience. Um, we still have four minutes, so uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, my, you said you got really interested in this topic, and my question is, um, what was the most interesting thing that you found, or the, your favorite discovery that you found? I was reading a, uh, a, a quote, like this, this part from a book, it's called The Voice of Destruction. It's from this um, ex-Nazi uh, officer, and he, he's talking about Hitler's interest in Brazil, that he wanted to make uh, Brazil a second colony of, Hitler, uh, of Germany during the war period. And I was like, what? <laughs> Hitler was trying to make a second, because with close relationships with uh, Germany and uh, and uh, Brazil, Hitler saw a key interest in, in expanding its, uh, its foreign policy in Brazil. And Brazil has, uh, at the time, had a huge colony of, Ger uh, of Germans in, in, in south of Brazil, which some newspapers have printed in German, people didn't, know, didn't speak Portuguese, it was like a little Germany inside Brazil. And something that, I, that blew my mind was like, what's well, the like, because there's little colonies of Germany inside Brazil. And funny thing is, uh, not really funny, but uh, <laughs> in 1937 he abolished. He was like, no uh, foreign, uh, no foreign languages in newspapers. Everyone is going to turn Brazilian now. So he did this in 1937, which actually decreased with the influence of Germany at the time. So that was something that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, how? As you said, fascism can be considered kind of an open term as we were researching the conflict. I was wondering what was the definition that you have come to accept based on your essay also? So, what I did, I didn't use a definition, I used characteristics. Something that I could, uh, I, I felt that using characteristics of fashion would be easier for me to classify the good values. So I used, uh, as uh, always has said, it's called, uh, it's a study by Lawrence Dave W. Grid, uh, which it's 14 uh, characteristics. He perceived, as he researched various regimes, he perceived four different defining characters of fascism. It's, uh, it's power, there are 14, but just uh, if you want a few of them, it's powerful and constitutes nationalism, 
It's uh, supremacy of military control of mass media, which Tudio Vargas has some of them. He controlled media, he had a uh, powerful in, in, in Christian nationalism, he burned all the flags from, Brazil, from uh, each state, and said that we're not states, we're, we're a whole uh, unity. But there's some that don't really identify like, and it's the supremacy of, of military, it's expanding territories, which there, he does fit in some, but not most. So uh, you can be more seen as a dictator, but not as, not as a fascist. That's where I am. Um, which is, thank you. Maybe I'm just adding on to Abba's question, would you, uh, in your ascendancy, do you relate him or kind of compare and contrast him to Mussolini or Hitler, who as well in that period of time were extreme fascists? Wait, so, um, could you just repeat that? Just yeah, I was, I was going to add on G, because um, you basically stated these points of characteristics of fascist mm -hmm. leaders. Did you, in your extended essay, relate them to Hitler and Mussolini, who during the same period of time yeah. basically gave the world this the, mm -hmm. the ground point of view of what extreme fascism yeah, was? I, I started talking, well, we were talking defining fascism by the brief, like history of what was, what was fascism, where did it come from? So I talked about uh, how Mussolini in 22 he marked, like, paraded to the streets of Rome and uh, where he instituted the fascist party. Because yeah, so, Fasci is a uh, work in, in Latin or Italian. One of them, one of them two. But it's, it, it's that work dignifies uh, a person, right? So this very work ethics and how that uh, came into the, 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 the ideology that almost worked. But that was the positive part of, uh, I guess, fascism, but there's also, uh, as you all know, the, the very negative ones, which are mostly, uh, which are all the 14 defining characters. So I did this kind of also. Yes. Any other questions? Um, okay, so I'm here. Thank you so much. Thank you.